Hello, welcome back. In this video now we're going to look at how to use the uh, normal distribution uh, to approximate binomial probabilities. So binomial probability distribution you may recall is a discrete probability distribution and this is the distribution of uh, events that uh, it's either on or off. It either happens with some probability or it doesn't happen with one minus whatever that probability is. So when sample sizes get large uh, with the binomial distribution, it can be easier to approximate those probabilities with the normal uh, probability distribution. And they're just that, they're approximations, they're rough, they're, they're not exact. And you'll see we're gonna do some uh, manipulation with the numbers to, to approximate those probabilities of interest. So let's first start off with uh, figuring out what are the parameters of our distribution. So this is a normal distribution and so we need to know what is the mean and uh, standard deviation and that happens to be the first part of, uh, of this problem, part A. So our mean, mu, this is calculated by just the sample size times the proportion. So this is going to be 80 times 0 0.35. These numbers are just coming from up here. And so this is going to be 80 times 0.35, so I have a mean of 28. And my standard deviation, this is the square root of n times p times one minus p. So this will be the square root of 80 times 0.35 times one minus 0.35. So let's see. 80 times 0.35 times 1 minus 0.35 and square root, so 4 point, let's round that to 4.27. Okay, so now we have the parameters of our uh, normal distribution. So we can go ahead and, and uh, calculate uh, everything that we need here. So. Part, part B, given the parameters of the distribution, can it be approximated? Well, there are these criteria that must hold in order for this to work. And this is what I was saying, the sample sizes must be sufficiently large. And so for, for part B, we just need to look at, uh, the, do these two criteria hold? Uh, and if so, then we have uh, sufficient parameters to approximate. Uh, this distribution with the normal distribution. So this is 80 times 0.35. Well, we've just calculated that over here. This was 28, so that one's okay. This one is 80 times one minus 0.35. So this is gonna be 80 times one minus 0.35 and that's 52. Oh, what happened to my pen here? Uh, that was 52, so that one checks out. So yes. Yes, because of these two calculations here. We meet those criteria, so we're okay. Next step. What is the probability of exactly 20 successes? Well, this one now, this can be a little bit confusing. The very that the knee-jerk reaction, or kind of the first thing that you might think of is, well, this is a continuous probability distribution, just like we've looked at when, when we looked at just the normal probability distribution, when we looked at the uniform probability distribution, uh, any of these continuous distributions, the probability of exactly some value occurring is always equal to zero. And, and so it's been fairly straightforward, just a rule. We just say, no, no, it's never gonna be exactly that number, so it'll be zero. Uh, however, discrete distributions, such as the binomial distribution, precise values do occur uh, with some specified probability. So how can we then use the continuous distribution to approximate a discrete value? Well, what we do is we use, a, we call it a continuous, um, continuous factor correction or co continuity correction, uh, if you will. So what that means is, so here I'm looking at exactly 20. So my value of interest, my value of interest is here, 
20. Now, in order to approximate the discrete probability, we use this correction factor, this continuity correction factor. And instead of looking just at 20, because that would be zero, we look at the interval between uh, 19.5 and 20.5. So that gives us now a, an interval of width 1. And that value 0.5 that we've added, that's our continuity correction, our con um, yeah, continuity correction. So now we just have to figure out what is that area under the curve between those two values, 19 and a half and 20 and a half. So we need to now calculate what is the corresponding Z score because of course whenever we're working with the standard no uh, with a normally distributed variable, we're also working with the standard normal distribution. So I need a Z value for uh, 20.5 from a mean of 28. That standard deviation is 427. And I need the same for 19.5 minus 28 over 4.27. So let's get our calculator out here. So 20.5 minus 28 divided by 4.27 is negative 176. And the next one, 19.5 minus 28 divided by 427 is 199, negative 199. So now we need to go to our distribution tables. And, oh, this is still messy from previous exercises. And I need to look up uh, negative 176. So here, scroll down negative 1.76 and so those come together here 0 0.0392 so this is the probability 0 0.0392 and for negative 199 negative 1.99 that looks like point oh negative 99 is over here and there's our nine that's point zero two three three so then our our probability of interest our approximate probability for exactly 20 successes is going to be this minus this 0 0.0392 minus 0 0.0233 and that equals uh, where am I here? 0 0.0392 minus 0 0.0233 point zero fifty nine. there we go there's our approximate probability of exactly 20 successes. What is the probability of 14 to 18 successes? Okay, so again, we want to include the values of 14 or 18. So this is Z is, is greater than or equal to 14 or less than or equal to 18. So again, we need to apply that continuity correction factor of, of 0.5 so that we include those endpoints, right? If this is my probability that Z is less than or equal to 18, greater than or equal to 14, but I want to be sure to include the endpoints in that calculation, I need to include the, continu uh, the continuity correction of 0.5 here, and down on this end, this is going to be 13.5. And we do that for exactly the same reason that we added and subtracted 0.5 in order to obtain our, our estimate, our approximation of this probability. So this is going to be between here 13.5 and somewhere around here 18.5. So again we need our z values 
This is going to be 18.5 minus 28 over 4.27. This will be 13.5 minus 28 over 4.27. Okay, so the first, let's see here. 18.5 minus 28 divided by 4.27. Negative 2.22. And the next, 13.5 minus 28 divided by 4.27. Negative 3, let's call that 340. Okay, this first calculation here, we want to calculate or look up in our tables the probability to the left of that. That will give us this whole region. And then we're going to subtract off the probability that corresponds to this. So we'll subtract off this region, and that'll give us what we're looking for. That'll give us what's left. Now, I feel like these are all going to be very small probabilities. Negative 2.22. There's negative 2.2, and there's our second decimal, so 0 0.0132. So this is 0 0.0132. And the next one for negative 3.4, that's way up here, negative 3.40. So 0, 0, 0, 0.003. And so the difference, 0, 0.132 minus 0 0.0003 equals, oops, 0 0.01432, oops, 0 0.0132 minus 1230 equals point zero one two nine. Okay. There we have it, 0 0.0129. Pretty small probabilities we're working with. We don't really have any context here, so I can't interpret this in any meaningful or interesting way, but it's just an exercise in applying these correction factors more than anything else. So let's move on. Probability of 16 or fewer successes. My goodness. Okay, 16 or fewer. So again, we need to apply that correction continuity correction because I want to include 16 so what I'm going to do if this is 16 I want 16 or fewer so I want to include 16 in that area so we're gonna apply that continuity correction here 16.5 and all we need now to do is calculate the area under the curve to the left so again we need that Z statistic 16.5 minus 28 over 427, 16.5 minus 28, divided by 4.27, 2.69, negative. And so the probability of a Z less than or equal to negative 269 is, let's go to our tables, negative 2.6 there's our negative 2.69 so where those come together is right here 0, 0, 0036 yeah. done just like that okay so again good practice to use the those z tables the real trick here is uh, the application of this, just remembering to apply this correction factor because we're approximating numbers and we want to make sure that we include uh, our endpoint. So it's not fewer than 16, it's 16 or fewer. So we add that correction on there in order to make sure that we include the probability of that endpoint, that value 16, also occurring. Okay, good. I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.